After months of waiting due to chip shortage, I finally got my 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro over a year ago. Being my daily driver, the device was put through its paces, and besides productivity, this included content creation, mainly long-form 4K editing, such as digital products and art. I also created some music and occasionally practiced coding. Based on that, I am very satisfied as the 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro exceeded my expectations. It also showed me that the Pro chip might have been more reasonable. So let me share my experience as an every chooser and content creator, hoping to help others make the right choice. Build Quality Since its unboxing on the channel, I had zero issues with my 24-core 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. When I held it for the first time, it felt like a tank, and nothing has basically changed. Space Gray Despite the claims that it gets boring quicker, I opted for the Space Gray model. More than a year later, I still find it very stylish and sleek. I'm also not bored of it, as it fits my studio better. On the contrary, I cannot skip mentioning it's a fingerprint magnet, to say the least. It requires extra dry hands, which I have most, but not all of the time. So, it will be awesome if Apple comes up with a solution. Let me know if you feel the same. Chassis and Ergonomics Often working from a sofa, I am delighted with the 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. It's very comfortable and pleasant to use. Meaning, it's not too heavy or bulky, having the right real estate for a tall guy with large palms. Ports As a digital creator, I am glad that the chassis functionality is back. Relying on external solutions, I never felt limited by the ports. Whatever I do, they suffice, and that's how it's supposed to be for an almost packed out configuration. Thanks to the SD card slot, I'm also thrilled to not exert additional effort when offloading footage. Let me know if the same applies to you. Screen and Keyboard Being a writer first, I love this 16-inch MacBook Pro keyboard and screen. While the first has an excellent tactile feeling, like the keys find my fingers and not vice versa, the second keeps its vibrant colors even at the lowest brightness. My eyes cherish that as it looks stunning even when rocking blue-white walking glasses, which is often. Coding Given that coding is more of a side hobby, everything runs snappy. VS Code is a breeze on the liquid retina and I have zero issues with multiple Chrome tabs, though I use the browser strictly for coding and sound quote. My tags are readily noticeable even at the lowest brightness, or at least they are, with an extension like Mamet Tevoy's theme. The same colorizes those differently, which may include your studio team. On the contrary, I am not sponsored, so feel free to suggest a better one. Music Mentioning music, I composed and mixed about 10 tracks with my 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. While they don't have audio clips waiting for me to record scratches, all the projects have multiple instances of DSTs like Serum, Silent One, Nexus, Complete, etc. Everything is blazingly fast as long as I use the trackpad, yet oddly, my Logitech MX Master makes the app waggy and somewhat slow. Given that I hardly believe this is an Apple issue, it likely comes from poor communication between image wines and Logitech's products. Let me know if you encountered anything similar. Speakers I also appreciate the crispy sounding speakers. Having a clear frequency response, they do remarkably well with the 808s and the low end in general. Thus, they can be used as a reference pair. Let me know if you agree, if you are a producer. Digital art. Besides Photoshop made thumbnails, I use my 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro to create digital products, art, and graphics for my videos. Such files can have multiple artboards and plenty of layers depending on the case, yet, whatever there is, the device handles it with no issues, despite my usual multitasking. Video editing. Even though Adobe apps are not fully optimized, the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro made my experience the best it has ever been. Dealing with multiple clips and what's applied, I have almost no issues editing 4K fine footage. 
While this is down sampled 7k in Seawalk 3 4 to 2, about 98% of the time things run smoothly and I'm editing IPB and 4S which is more taxing for the machine. iPhone footage. Depending on the case, iPhone footage can be tricky to edit. Unlike my favorite 4K cinematic, ProRes isn't precisely manageable. Although made by Apple, ProRes remains tough to edit. This is because of file size, codec and Adobe Spore optimization. On the other hand, I don't mess with ProRes, or at least not for now, so it doesn't bother me. Premiere issues. Speaking of Premiere, some effects it inherits from After Effects are not optimized at all, so you either use them there or forget about them. And I think this is a shame as we talk basic stuff like Venetian points and displacement map. I'll be happy if anyone shares a solution to this problem and I'm grateful that things like VR glitch do not fall into that group. Regarding motion graphics, I haven't encountered issues working in real time, yet I mostly do simple stuff which you can see on my other channel. Battery life. The 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro battery is pretty phenomenal. Though I never pushed it that far, my rough estimation is that it can last up to 2 days of writing, coding and streaming music. Adding Illustrator and FL Studio lowers that duration and in terms of video editing and alternating different apps it's up to two thirds of a day, but I'll be happy if you share how it goes for you. Fans Whatever the case, the fans seldom kick in. Depending on the video, that's about once a month during export. They might do so if it's a long form content with diagrams and graphics for my other channel. If it's a video like this, they likely won't. What I learned the most important I learned after a year with the 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro is that the fully spec or almost fully spec out models are overkill for about 95% of the creators. As one planning to get more into 4K Fine and Seawalk 3, I don't see myself needing to update anytime soon, despite using IPB. I think this applies to people with R-series cameras, and as far as for Sony and Panasonic, I have no experience with either, although most of their models have all intra, hence their footage is more manageable for the computer. Based on my use case, the highest tier M1 Pro chip would have given me more bang for the buck. With the Apple Silicon getting better and better, and me sticking to Canon, I'll likely not spend that amount on a computer soon, but it is what it is, and I have zero regrets. Should you upgrade? Truth be told, I can hardly justify updating from an M1 Max, M1 Pro or even an M1 chip for most people on the platform. The same applies to the newer models. These chips are just too good and they will serve you well for years to come. Those needing the latest and greatest know who they are and the tools they need. Such people are few and far between, don't have a budget and neither include me and most likely you. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what is yours, such as your experience with the M1 Max. Otherwise, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for more content, consider checking my digital products, music and books, support me with either of the links in the description and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for your time.